Greetings, my name is Slight, and we are going to be taking a look at Mr. Failology's winning first place submission for the Blade of Bloom Mastery Challenge. Um, let's pop this into full screen. We're going to watch his run. Um, I've already confirmed that it is a successful attempt and follows all the rules, and it is an epic one. Just to be clear, um, we changed the rules a little bit. After Mr. Failology won, um, we talked about it, and he was cool. He said that uh, he thinks it would be more fun if the challenge continued. So instead of him getting all three prizes, um, he's just going to get the he, – he got to pick one of the three. He picked the $50 Amazon gift card. So the duo run with me on the channel is still available, and the Gunfire Reborn key is still available. Um, and so without further ado, let's look at this awesome run. Uh, this is going to be really, really fun. Um, okay, let's get started. Uh, let me actually plug in my headphones. All right, we're ready. We're ready. Okay, and I'm going to be uh, going through this as if I was watching it. So, okay, picks endless assault. That's what he's supposed to do. First chest. Ooh, porcupine is one of the best starting uh, things that you can get because it's just so good with Tau's Fatal Bloom. Um, it's so good at triggering multiple things, and I, I love the. Res I respect this so much. The instant kill. It just simplifies this, and um, you know, it really makes it so like you. The, one of the other things to consider, uh, I I intentionally chose that you kill yourself early so that you actually don't. You're not able to continue the run on um, uh, because I I I. It doesn't. It's not the same kind of challenge. Like the the cool thing about a roguelike is when you, you get punished for dying, um, and so. Uh, if you're doing a one life challenge and you actually have two lives and then you can like play through the rest to like see how it would go, like it's not quite the same. So I intentionally chose this. Um, there's a hotkey to speed up the game and slow it down. I just don't remember what it is. But we're gonna go at 1.5 speed here. Okay, Mr. Failology. Now, interesting choice here, interesting. I don't know, so I don't know if this is the most efficient way to play. Um, he chose to go in the first vault in the tombs. And, you know, as a, like, so he's a speed runner. Don't forget that. So, like, he said that he even uh, queued up in normal at first because normal is so optimized and, and everyone wants to play on normal for speed running. Uh, so it very well may be the case that in speed running, my guess would be that, like, you actually check the first couple vaults to see if you get a high roll really early um, because that kind of determines your trajectory as to whether or not R8 is a legitimate like speed run. So my guess here, and Mr. Failology can confirm or deny at a, at a later point, is that uh, if he could go back, he probably wouldn't have gone into this vault, um, and that this was actually suboptimal. And the reason it is suboptimal is because you have to think about um, maximizing the one uh, uh, vault that you do get. And see, he gets something that's really not very useful there. And if, if we had gone into like a uh, a puzzle vault, then you'd get two pretty much guaranteed scrolls no, with low risk. Or if you go into a elite vault, probably the second best vault, you have a chance for a goblet, which is great on a Blade of Bloom build. And um, you get to pick one of three scrolls, which means it's, it'll on average be better for your build. All right, he's just killing everything. And, uh, yeah, this early porcupine is just doing so good. First pick, Blade of Bloom. Okay, all right, so one of the things we're going to notice about this particular build is that it is a it is a high roll. This is not a, like, I just made it through. This was a, a high roll run. Um, uh, Mr. Failology gets a lot of the stuff that he needs uh, to... Uh, make this challenge as easy as it can be not to say that it's easy but uh and not to diminish he's playing extremely well and his time to to when he beat this run is 23 minutes um it, it now i i don't think that you have to get super lucky to actually beat this challenge but uh, uh he did get very lucky and played very well um and i think it actually might be kind of it's not i don't think it's required that you have to play uh, you have to get really lucky, um, but you have to play in a different way. And one of the things that uh, I think we'll see as we watch Mr. Failology's run here is that he does something that I haven't been doing when doing this challenge and pretty much uses like all of his blooms until he's out and then starts using his weapon. And that's really efficient uh, because 
Uh, you have so many uh, Fatal Blooms because of Endless Assault. Um, if you're not actually like using those all the time, then uh, uh, then you're actually like reducing your value a lot, especially when you have an early Blade of Bloom um, like he does. Uh, and I think consider if, if you're looking for the second or third place spot, you may consider, uh, you know, forcing like restarts. The, the hard thing is I'm going to make you like you're going to lose essence if you do that um, because I, I want you to kill yourself pretty much immediately. But if you don't get Blade of Bloom on the first chest, you could consider resetting uh, if you're looking for the second or third spot. Blade of Bloom 2, all right. Big, big increase in damage for Blade of Bloom when you go from 1 to 2. I mean, 1 is already quite good, but uh, 2 early on is quite a lot of damage. It's enough to be, like, usable. Gets the free etch. Still using the Porcupine. And one thing I noticed about uh, Mr. Failology is, see, see that kind of stuff? That seems really little right there, what he just did. But this is the kind of stuff that it can be really easy to forget. Like, he is recognizing situations where he can gain free damage without any risk. And see, right here, he's going to go into zero risk mode, all right? Just kill them without taking any damage, guaranteed, all right? And that, I think that's really cool and something that I think we could all learn from watching uh, players like this. All right, he's doing great, but remember, this challenge really is actually not too bad in the tombs. Like, I would say that I get out of the tombs like 70, 80% of the time when I do this run, and then I lose in the desert. God, the desert is brutal, especially if you don't have a good high roll going into it. Um, uh, interesting here that he, ch he chooses the health. The health is more overall survivability, um, and you know, I think it's actually worth considering. Um, I think maybe if you had Sword Guard already at this point, the uh, the shield might be better on average. But maybe because he doesn't, he's going for the m the maximum value that he can get out of uh, out of that chest right now, uh, because this early game is so scary. But look at how uh, aggressive he is in his Fatal Bloom usage. Uh, he just he that his he recognizes that he has to leverage what he's been given, and he has infinite Blade of Bloom casts, so he really is leveraging that now. It helps that he has Blade of Bloom 2 already, for sure, because I don't think this strategy is quite as viable if you don't have Blade of Bloom 2 already. Sword Enthusiast is exactly what we're looking for. One thing you'll notice as you're doing these runs is that Sword Enthusiast is more late game damage. It's not quite as good early, especially like if you don't if you only have one, like one level of Blade of Bloom, but as you get higher and higher um, uh, level, uh, and you get more and more synergies with the Blade of Bloom strategy, uh, it gets better and better to have Sword Enthusiast. And Sword Enthusiast 3 is really, really hardcore good in the late game. That's that's If you can get Sword, Guard, Sword Enthusiast 3, that's when you really start to do crazy damage. All right. And so at this point, I think his damage is quite good. Let's keep moving forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now, interesting here that he chooses not to take. Um, he chooses not to take untold effort here, and I thought about this for quite a bit while watching. Uh, watching this, I kind of paused right here. Also, say hello to the kitty. Um, I I paused here to watch this for quite a bit, and you know, with his strategy, he's really spamming. He's really spamming. He's really not utilizing fatal blooms like 12 hits to re-trigger a lot. The cool thing about Untold Effort is that um, your initial cast has a 50% chance to get double damage or basically double consumption. But also, every subsequent trigger of Fatal Bloom can also get doubled by Untold Effort without actually any risk of you spending any more for it. So Untold Effort is one of the best uh, scrolls for Tau whenever you're playing a Fatal Bloom like hit build. Not specifically a Blade of Bloom build. So I have a lot of respect for um, Mr. Failology's choice to recognize what was working with the strategy, which was spamming Blade of Bloom, and that Untold Effort wasn't quite going to work out. It's unclear whether this would have been an overall benefit in the long run, but I can definitely see why it's like a big risk right now. It basically halves his stacks, right? I feel like that's the case. All right, he's doing good. He goes through here. Oh man, this one. 
Okay, so getting one through three enhanced occult scrolls. You know what? I'm banning this next time. <laughs> this thing is ridiculous. One to three enhanced occult scrolls. So he gets Lifesaver, which is uh, now granted. We watched this, and he even mentioned that Lifesaver is actually really, really strong and potentially, like he didn't mention it specifically, but we kind of both think that Lifesaver enhanced is really, really, really good and maybe worth being banned. And Abundant Vitality is actually incredible on Tau. Oh my gosh. Abundant Vitality Enhanced, um, it increases, it once you start regenerating your shield, it doesn't stop, okay? And Tau, whenever she kills someone, starts regenerating her shield, okay? And you get plus 75% multiplicative damage while your shield is regenerating. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe he checks it here. Yep, plus 75, oh, it's weapon damage. Okay, all right, all right. So it doesn't actually affect his Blade of Bloom. So... I'll consider whether or not to ban that in the future for Tau, uh, Tau Mastery runs, um, but it's incredibly good on Tau specifically because she has such a, a built-in way to start that recharge, um, so a very good high roll here, um, but that being said, not a big impact on this particular run. I think we saw that Life Trigger only, Life Lifesaver only triggers once this entire run, so that'd be sort of like a normal Lifesaver, and it's not included in the ban list, so we can't punish it, and I wouldn't want to. But, just like uh, we are all learning how to beat this uh, Mastery Challenge, I am learning how to create Mastery Challenges and make them consistent and fun to play. Uh, because there's a lot that's easy to miss. When I uh, actually submitted, and look at this charge right here. So smart. Now that is, that is really good game sense to know that there's only horse heads left. Uh, I think that's right, yeah, only horse heads left. So now that's the perfect time to do a... Uh, a piercing attack to the back line. Um, that's something that Mr. Failology has probably played, played the game so much that he doesn't even recognize that that's what he's doing. But that kind of move really makes a huge impact on your ability to beat a room. Because if you sat here and tried to kill all these horse heads first while that uh, heavy crossbowman is shooting at the back line at you, uh, you're really running the risk of uh, uh, losing this. You know, just all you have to do is take a couple random shots because those are generally randomized a little bit and you're done and it's over. So here, Sword Enthusiast 2 is almost certainly the pick. Like, Glowing Bloom is not bad. Mark Chaser's eh, like, nah, we don't really want that. Glowing Bloom is not bad. Um, but Sword Enthusiast 2 is exactly kind of what we're looking for. And it really just gives us a better chance to get Sword Enthusiast 3 later. All right. And, okay, and this is another thing we're seeing. So see here, he decides that uh, he doesn't need this uh, Crimson Fire Scale. I mean, it's fine. But remember, in Act 3, he's going to need... He's not going to be able to use a weapon at all. So having a, uh, a sword as your secondary weapon uh, as you go into Act 3 actually is awesome because it gives you movement speed. So if you're if you're going into Act 3, uh, pick up a sword um, so that you can use that during the Act 3 time and get that 30% move speed boost. It's actually more than that, isn't it? It's like uh, 30 plus 30% 30 move speed or something like that. Um, but very smart, and you can tell that Mr. Failology is already thinking about Act 3 in Act 1. All right, hidden treasure, not 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 as good. That's not the one that gives you secondary charges. So, and he's got this. He doesn't have the best weapon for this. And I might consider in the future banning uh, lightning gloves for Tau. Um, I don't know if I need to though. But yeah. Oh, so he keeps this. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So this is just fine. Um, Interesting that we see uh, Mr. Failology not electing to do the uh, jump or dash dodge on the laser. That's something that I'm not super comfortable with either. But you do know that he's uh, intentionally kept... Oh, look at that damage. Pretty good. And let's just rewatch that real quick. So notice how this damage increases over time as a Sword Enthusiast tracks up. So, right now... I'm just watching that health bar go down, and it goes down more and more each time because of those uh, sword enthusiasts. So just kind of cool to be able to see that in action. All right, Realm of Corrosion's fine. Sword Enthusiast 3. So this is interesting. 
So, and this would require some calculation, but uh, I know that Mr. Philology chooses to go Epic Swordcraft here because that's a 100% multiplicative damage increase on the base damage of Flying Sword. That's a lot of damage increase. But um, you can't see it here, but the difference between level two and level three of Sword Enthusiast is two seconds of duration, which is meaningful. Um, lucky Shot Chance, which is not super uh, helpful, um, and a 1.5 damage and skill uh, increase. So that's less than a 100% increase as far as the damage increases uh, uh, from Sword Enthusiast two to three, and you're not get, being able to capture the Lucky Shot Chance because you're not gonna be able to shoot later. So he decides to go Epic Swordcraft. That is probably uh, the better choice. I, I and I am I don't know how it would be a difficult to calculate whether or not that's true, but I definitely see why he does that. Um, and so you hate to hate to skip that, but uh, very smart not to get too caught up into just picking the level three thing. Um, it's these types of plays that uh, uh, just you know get me excited to make challenges like this and to see people take them on. Let's see if we can. Okay, so the desert. As you can see, uh, even with a very powerful setup, uh, he's struggling. And one thing that I have played around with a lot is that I've been really working on like a different way of approaching this. Um, one thing I'll say is that I'm absolutely planning on doing a full breakdown of how to beat this challenge uh, once it's once we complete the challenge uh, or once we complete the the and get three winners. Um, and that will break down the effective, the strategies that were used to win um, and uh, some of the ways that uh, you can take this challenge on yourself. Uh, you're going to see one of those ways to do it now, but I think there's a way to focus on your weapon for the Anxi Desert. Um, and, you know, Mr. Failology has the uh, luxury of not needing to focus on his weapon too much because his uh, Blade of Bloom uh, build is already popping off pretty well. We can see that he only switches to this Crimson Fire Scale when he's out of Blade of Bloom stacks, just about. Or at least that's what we saw uh, right there. Decides not to go for the Puzzle Vault right there, which would be two free scrolls. scrolls. Looks like he has recognized that he needs to uh, prioritize getting goblets. This room can be very tough if you don't have enough move speed. Ow. Makes me feel better that I get hit by that sometimes. This little spot is always really... Dude, everyone's dead right there. <laughs> Alright. And by just uh, doing a good job of uh, keeping an eye on how many stacks of uh, Fatal Bloom he has, uh, we're getting through this pretty easily. I don't think he does anything here. Get some money back. Oh, he does go back for this puzzle vault. Okay, and I, that makes a lot of sense to me. Two guaranteed scrolls is nothing to scoff at. This is one of my favorite ones. Okay, now we're going to see something cool, all right? I want you to pause at each step of this and decide whether you would take it or not, okay? Effective split. Oh, man. I just... All right. I respect that so much. All right. Mr. Failology realizes that for this strategy to work, that you have to maximize your, like, high roll. You have to actually um, force, like, give yourself every opportunity to get as powerful as you need to be at the critical time in Act 3. Um, and uh, because he is recognizing that and has, like, so much clear focus on uh, getting to that par particular position, he's willing to throw all of his money away to try to get something that would actually synergize with his build. He doesn't get it, but he gives himself every possible chance. And uh, I think that's awesome. And I mean, sometimes you just get offered Spirit Bible in a skill build uh, based run. And, uh, you know, we love to see that. <laughs> love to see that. So I'd say now, I'd say he's like in a really good spot as far as his damage is concerned. He's going to be doing a lot of Blade of Bloom damage. 
I think he can one-shot most small enemies. Blade of Bloom 3, uh, Sword Enthusiast 3, and I think one level of Amplified Sword might be really good here. Ugh, and he gets offered Sword Enthusiast 3. Golly. You'll love to see it. And now you're seeing why this was a, this was a win. But we are, this is not easy yet. I mean, do not let your guard down. If you're, if you're taking this challenge on, even if you have a high roll like this, a couple mistakes, a couple gr little bits of greed uh, can be can can end the run, and we're gonna see uh, some <laughs> potentially slightly greedy decisions coming up. Okay, nice. We got some more skill damage. So you you can see the change in the play already. So we no longer do we see uh, Mr. Failology hiding or taking guaranteed uh, damage. He recognizes that he's at a very powerful state, and for that reason, he's actually engaging with the enemy like in close quarters combat. Um, this is uh, uh, the type of stuff that, if you're not doing it very well, can lead to a loss. This is not a criticism of Mr. Failology. It's just, I mean, I think he would agree. You know, you know, I th and I think this is a normal human, you know, tendency. Like when when you're feeling strong, you don't want to just like you, you want to like you get like in the zone and like the like the 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 same mechanic, the same cognitive mechanic that helps you play safe gets kind of turned off, and like now you want to like exert your will or exert the power that you feel. Um, so uh, that's what we're seeing here, and it's just worth remembering for everyone playing that most of the time you're not going to be this strong. Um, and so I would say that uh, he can get away with playing uh, very aggressive. One thing I think we could see um, at this point. Uh, is a little bit of, well, no, this is working fine. This is working fine. Mr. Failogy does not need, I think this is all doing very well. I mean, his damage is insane. So he was getting pretty low on Fatal Bloom charges there, but instead of trying to use his weapon to recharge them, uh, through, uh, the, uh, what is it called? Emergency protocol? No. <laughs> Something backpack, maybe? Anyway, there's a, a talent tree that, as you can shoot ammo, you get secondary skills. Um, I don't think it was necessary there. By just using the uh, d destructibles, uh, I think that was plenty. And and we saw that that was the case. So, yeah, the, the only good choice here is Swordsman. All right. Okay, I think this is a danger room. So, we just talked about... Um, how we can see the change in his play. We know that uh, Mr. Failology is feeling powerful at this point in the run. And so we're seeing instead of him hiding here, he's like, you know, right in their face. And he knows that he can kill them. No need. We're not really using the weapon, so there's no real need to change it. All right. Oh, dude, sick, sick. This... Enhanced Corrosion Enthusiast is absolutely broken. It's basically a 40% permanent move speed and plus 20, like, you know, and it, it you get 40% move speed and 20% damage reduction all the time. And sure, you give yourself like a 50% move speed slow when you inflict decay, but if you're not doing that, it's like 100% uptime, massive stat boost. So that's another, that's a, that's a really good drop. So I would say like the RNG that's really favored, uh, Mr. Failology at this point is more Ascension focused. Um, Spirit Bible is great, but I think there are other things that would also be very good. Uh, he does have quite a bit of skill, dam skill damage from scrolls. He's got uh, Brutal Gloves, um, and I, I can't remember if he has one other. But I'd say the luckiest place he's been is not been his scrolls. Um, it's mostly been Ascensions, and not weapons either. Um, and so we're seeing him leverage that. But I think that uh, a good weapon uh, can get you through the Angsley Desert if you have if you're lucky with that, and that'll give you plenty of time to get your ascensions that you need, and it will allow you to take on elites, which gives you higher chances to um, uh, get even more goblets. Now, one thing that's really tough about this particular situation is that the monsters are healing, um, and he is out. Oh gosh! <laughs> oh man! And he's out of Fatal Bloom charges. And, you know, Tau does a really good job at keeping her Fatal Bloom charges high, especially with Endless Assault, but it is possible to run out. One of the things I love about this challenge is that you can still run into uh, 
uh, secondary charge problems. Okay, this is a tough room. This is all enemies transform into Dark Face Bandit or Desert Boar upon being defeated. I think a lot of us are going to lose this room. I think a lot of us are. Let's watch Mr. Failology play it. Um, he's going to be leveraging his extremely high move speed by using a melee weapon and this Corrosion Enthusiast enhanced version. Um, and uh, I think that is what he needs to be able to get through this. And so let's watch this. Okay, big damage. Remember that when you cast Fatal Bloom on one target, it does a lot more damage. Because when you hit multiple targets with a uh, Fatal Bloom, it spreads the swords out between all of them. Ooh, see that? Oh my gosh. So easy to die right there. All right, he saw the corrosion, and he just did take corrosion damage. Um, and he is corroded right now. Wow. Very good movement. Very. Back up to four uh, Fatal Bloom charges. Back up to four. He's hitting in an area which doesn't do a lot of damage. Like when he hits seven people, nice shot. Cancels out the corrosion ball right there. I think he, was, I think he managed to get it before it exploded. Oh god. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh my gosh. Still hasn't triggered. Um, uh, you can't jump over that. I don't know why. It's ridiculous. Still hasn't triggered lifesaver though. All right. Wow. Crazy. So I would actually say the biggest thing that helped the two, like there were three things that really helped him survive right there. Notice that he doesn't have a sword guard, but he has very high movement speed because he has a melee weapon and uh, enhanced corrosion enthusiast and abundant vitality um, was like notice that there's a huge duration of time where this is just constantly recharging ever since not here, here. Um, you can't see it. Uh, oh wait, never mind. Yeah, ever since like about right there, uh, his shield is just constantly recharging, and that keeps him alive because he keeps taking a little bit of intermittent damage. I think that's the last damage he takes though, and he gets some heals too. Whew, man, that got my blood pumping. What a good room! Wow. All right, and very smart here. He's taking a little bit of a of time before he goes into the next step of this room. Remember, this is, you know, you just you did one half of this room. The second half can be just as uh, terrifying. And I don't know. Uh, it, it seems like a, like uh, when there's a group of people right there, they get like their little oops, sorry, their shots get caught on like the top of this little uh, staircase. So it seemed like Mr. Fellows was actually in a safe spot there, and they couldn't shoot him. Very easily. Interesting. Oh, maybe that's how he kept getting corroded. It wasn't... He was doing a good job stopping the uh, corrosion uh, effect. The corrosion enhancement. Um, but maybe he was applying corrosion, which was corroding him. That makes a lot of sense. Down to two fatal. One fatal. Two. Down to zero. It looks like he's doing a bit better job recognizing when he's low on it. And once again, you know, I, I, I hope that, I, I don't, this shouldn't sound like a criticism of him. Uh, I think that for me, when I play, I like go in and out of phases of recognizing how my build is functioning. Oh, yikes. Oh man, that, that AOE shot did not hit. That's good. Very smart for him to, to destroy that exploding barrel just in case. All right, we're not done yet. We still got a couple more guys. Come on. Dude, give me a desert boar. <laughs> give me a desert boar. What is this? Down to one. Nice job. Sick. That's the win right there, in my personal opinion. Uh, but it's not over yet. There's, It's still very possible to lose. Now, I do think that it might be worth considering... Um, against some other stuff, like if this was Mark Chaser instead of Furious Wave, I think the Curse Mark still might be better. And I don't know what Mr. Phaology would think, but uh, Furious Wave is about a 100% multiplicative damage boost on your flying swords, so that should not be ignored. But Curse Mark is very good. Um, getting the movement speed slow and the damage reduction uh, is one of the ways that, especially since he doesn't have Sword Guard, that he can actually keep himself in a survivable way. And I just want to say that 
you know, one thing to keep in mind is that I think there are actually multiple very different ways of beating this challenge. And one thing that we're seeing is probably the most aggressive version of it. But like Sword Guard is viable. And uh, you can, like, this is a very aggressive way to play. That's why it's so short. But there is a slower way to play that you can do in under 45 minutes that doesn't quite need this high roll. So just keep in mind, this is a no sword guard run up to this point. Bluff is great, 25% HP, 25% damage, excuse me. No real need to switch weapons. Maybe this is slightly better. Flowing Light and uh, the Poisonous Ghost have the same move speed, so nothing, nothing too important there. All right. Let's see how much damage he does. Nice. All right, just going all in. And it's smart to do that, so that did basically half of its health. And now he's just trying to focus on getting his charges back up. He doesn't want to... He really wants to not use those charges on the uh, bad guys. And you could see that reluctance. Gosh, that damage is insane. He's dead. Sword Enthusiast 3. And now he's got the uh, Epic Swordcraft, which was the 100% base damage increase. And Phantom Skin's great there. Glowing Bloom is the pick here. Yeah. Glowing Bloom is, is okay because the swords can trigger Glowing Bloom. Uh, or Fatal Bloom's reach, like, basically when you cast Fatal Bloom, when the swords hit again, they will trigger the extra damage effect from Fatal Bloom. Uh, so that's good. You could consider getting Royal Guard here, but it actually might increase the difficulty. Craftsman's Inheritable Inheritor is an option. Um, uh, you are allowed to use your weapon on Act 3 boss, so... Those two are options. We don't see Mr. Failology take anything here. I guess he doesn't need it, and he does. I think he might fear, or maybe he takes Royal Guard. No, he doesn't. Okay, yeah, I didn't think he did. Um, and I guess he's just trying to make sure that when he gets to the end here, that he's in the best possible position. Uh, one thing to keep in mind uh, is that uh, uh, Tao has a talent that gives you a charge of Fatal Bloom uh, for every five units that you cast Fatal Bloom on. Um, one thing I noticed while I was doing uh, research for this before I built the challenge um, was that if uh, you cast Fatal Bloom on someone and then Fatal Bloom's debuff uh, is no longer applied to them, so like the timer runs out, and then you cast it again, that counts and can re-trigger the gain of Fatal Bloom. So. If, uh, like, one strategy is if you had, like, a bunch of lanterns running around and you were trying to just, like, recharge all eight of your thorns relatively quickly, you could hit all five of them and then run around for five seconds and wait for that to fall off and hit them again, and you'd be able to get, like, you know, an extra uh, Fatal Bloom off of that, like a secondary charge. Just something to consider. That's a, that's a small thing, but uh, I think that uh, especially... Uh, if you're going to get through this challenge without getting a big high roll, that, uh, you know, a lot of little things have to come together. Um, and even with a high roll, you have to play very, very well. Uh, which is why we see someone like Mr. Failology being able to uh, take the challenge on. Currently, I don't think anyone else has uh, been able to beat it besides me. Um, or at least if they have, they haven't publicly said anything about it. So, I'm looking forward to uh, the next uh, winner. Uh, excuse me, kitty cat. Yes, hello. Hello. Oh, gosh. Do you have anything to say? Alright. Alright, he's doing great. He's doing great. Triple dash. Perfect. Love to see it. Does he do something cool here? Resolute is actually very good. Um, so he refreshes and then thinks about Resolute. And actually, Resolute is great because uh, you have... Because Tau automatically starts recharging her shield. So like the double time a shield rests before recharging is actually not a real downside for Tau. Alright, and he's doing great. He kills this room. And I would say at this point, 
he is not struggling too much. Oh, this is the one where they transform into white sharks. So, I mean, this is technically pretty scary. But, I mean, at this point, he is doing just fine. No problem. Let's keep moving forward. He, one thing that would have made this run really guaranteed, like, super easy, is if he had had anything that would have helped him recharge his secondary skills. Um, uh, so he is getting a little bit of secondary skill blocked, but not bad. You know, not really bad. So one thing we'll notice here is that he is swinging his sword to break destructibles, um, to recharge his secondary skills. Um, I like I wasn't clear about like like I said don't use your weapon at all you know and I think in the next challenge I would probably make that abundantly clear uh, but I would probably clarify like you can break pots as long as it has no effect on combat you know that type of stuff um, uh, and, and as long as you're not like uh, trying to like you know like charge secondary shots by shooting at the ground or something like that uh, my goal was to avoid some cheese strats but this one is like I'm not going to invalidate this run that's in the spirit of the run just because of a technicality like that. So he is going to hit like a pot at some point with a sword. Um, and I don't think that warrants an invalidation. Um, if you disagree, that's fine. But the whole point of this is that uh, I wanted whoever was going to win this to do it in the spirit of the challenge. And I would say that this absolutely is in the spirit of the challenge. So if you end up using, like as long as you, like if you're destroying pots... Um, in this challenge, I'd, I'd say that at this point that has to be allowed insofar that you're not like using it to uh, like you're not like shooting the pot a thousand times or like you know like you know act like using the secondary uh, like using ammo consumption to charge your secondaries which is which is kind of banned and cheesy and I was not looking forward to that being part of these runs uh, but destroying some pots why not why not? I would I would be a fool to invalidate this run for that reason. And okay, so he doesn't even take the thing. Yeah, he does. It's probably just a bunch of stuff that's unnecessary. And then he gets the annihilation monks. And with this move speed, I don't think this is an issue. Like I don't think this is that scary. You know, it's it's when you don't have a lot of move speed that these are actually really a problem. But especially with how many of them there are. Um, and the fact that he can kind of one-shot anything. And the AI on this particular room is, like, kind of silly. They're, they're kind of dumb, in my opinion. Like, they don't make a whole lot of sense with all the things they do. Alright. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, gosh. Okay, we're taking some damage here. Let's just check this. He gets caught there. I don't know on what. Oh, it's because his, his movement speed got decreased because he got his shield broken. That's what was happening. Alright. No problem. No problem. Okay. And then, at first I thought this might be kind of scary, but his damage is actually so insane. Like, it really doesn't matter. And these Yashas are like... <laughs> they're worthless right here. You can just cheese them. They just don't even know how to get to you. All right, boom, done. Okay, that's Act Three. Mark Chaser, Fountain of Life, sure. Whatever, none of that matters. Epic Swordcraft. Um, I think that's the better choice. It is a tough call, though. Here, one sec. Up, oh, sorry about that. I'm back. Um, had to take a phone call. Don't remember what I was talking about. Oh yeah, it's so. Epic Swordcraft 1 to 2 is a 50% multiplicative increase. It's not clear to me whether at Blade of Bloom 3, Amplified Sword would potentially be more of a multiplicative increase. Um, it only lasts one second, so hard to say. Uh, these might be closer than it seems. I don't know which one he picks. I could be wrong as well. All right, the final boss. Now he is allowed to use his weapon at this point, but in uh, because his Blade of Bloom strategy is just so good at this point, uh, we'll see him not use it. <laughs> don't need it. You know, it's that simple. Really, it's that simple. You just don't need it. 
So, let's speed this up. Smart for him to wait. Boom. Now the one thing that kind of sucks is that it you really need to like... Oh, let's get this off the screen. Like the more Blade of Blooms you can cast at once, the more effective the Sword Enthusiast is going to be. And now he's out. Alas. I almost never get hit by that second one. I even feel like I deserve to get hit and I don't get hit. So Mr. Failage, I can't remember where he said this, but he believes that if you uh, stand still, there's more likely to do a lunge attack. And he did get a lot of lunge attacks right there. But that's it. Victory. 23 minutes. Swordcraft 3. We love to see it. We love to see it. All right, good game. So, as a reminder, uh, hopefully that helps you if you're still trying to take on this challenge. Uh, well played to Mr. Failology. What a killer run. So good. Um, and prize, second and third place prize are still uh, options. Uh, get your runs submitted. Submit them to me on Discord or as a comment in the YouTube video uh, if you do it. And you can either do a do a run on my channel uh, with me. We'll make a challenge run together. It'll be fun. Or... The other thing is a Gunfire Reborn key, which is like, you know, who, you know, you know, it's not the best. You already have Gunfire, but, you know, if you have a friend, I'm saying if, like as if I was talking to me, you know, like if, you know, if I had a friend who didn't have Gunfire, you know, at this point, what would I have been doing with my life? I would have already convinced them to buy Gun or bought it for them, maybe even consider, you know, maybe. Anyway, catch you later. Have a good day.